There's lots of ways to explain agriculture. You can talk about it in terms of healthy soil, whether farming practices are organic or conventional, or even in terms of nature and biodiversity. You can also talk about farming in terms of water. There's rain-fed agriculture used to grow corn and soybeans in Iowa. In places like California, there's irrigated agriculture, which supplements rainfall with irrigation. And in the semi-arid high plains of eastern Colorado, dryland farmers have learned to make do with no additional water at all. This lack of water makes it one of the most challenging places to farm in America. When farmers first arrived here in the 1800s, they brought with them agricultural practices better suited for wetter climates. They used tillage methods that left the soil bare. In this dry environment, the effects were devastating. It can take hundreds of years to create a single inch of topsoil. But farmers watched helplessly as it was carried off by the wind. Crops failed, and some farming families lost everything they had. The Dust Bowl exposed the risks of unbalanced farming practices. Eighty years later, massive dust storms still signal that balance has not been restored as the valuable soil needed to grow our food continues to blow away. Today, the way most dryland farmers cope with the risks of farming in this harsh climate is by growing a single crop through annual cycles of wheat and fallow, essentially resting their soil for a year after each harvest to give it time to collect enough rainwater to produce another crop. But a wheat fallow rotation requires leaving soil bare for 14 months at a time. And that bare soil loses nearly 75% of that water to evaporation and weeds. A growing number of dryland farmers are now abandoning these traditional practices. They're searching for more resilient ways to farm, working with less water while building healthier soils. And one place people like David Augustine, a research ecologist with the USDA, are drawing inspiration is from the short grass prairie that has evolved for millennia. So as we walk across the prairie here, what I'm looking at is the mixture of the cool season and the warm season grasses. And what we have here is the state grass of Colorado. David thinks dryland farmers who traditionally grow single crops have much to learn from the short grass prairie. So the dominant type of agriculture in this region is dryland agriculture because of the water limitations, right? So those dryland agricultural systems are, first of all, they're based on one species and they require um, time, fallow periods, to collect water in order to produce a crop, right? So producing a single crop out here, often it's too dry to even produce a crop on a, on a year's worth of precipitation. So I think that's the main issue that the dryland agriculture in this region has to contend with, is how do you produce a crop with so little rainfall and also such unpredictable rainfall from year to year? And really that's what the species in this ecosystem have evolved to deal with. David thinks one of the shortgrass prairie's secrets is the complex interplay between plants with very different water use strategies. So first of all, we have the blue grama that's forming the understory of this area. And then right here, we have tillers of western wheatgrass. It's using water at a different time than the blue grandma. And then finally, a third group is what I call a subshrub. They're going to be running a single tap root to access water at deeper depths in the soil. By having all three of these groups, we have the ability for this plant community to use water in many different ways. David has a simple way to explain such an intricately balanced system. One word that I would use to describe this ecosystem is resilient because it can uh, survive such a wide range of climatic conditions. How can we develop agricultural systems that are able to respond to that lack of predictability in the precipitation regime?
That's a question farmers like Cole Mertens are trying to answer. One way they're mimicking the prairie's resilient ecosystem is by becoming more diverse. They're expanding their traditional rotations to include other crops, including millet and corn. And because these farmers never know when it's going to rain, they're growing crops that need water at different times of the year, using the rain when it comes. But the number one concern of farmers is staying in business. As Gary Peterson, a soil scientist at Colorado State University, explains. I think the way to the heart of any businessman is how do you make profit? And so you have to approach it from what will work economically and not talk much about biodiversity. For Gary, communicating the benefits of diverse crop rotations is easy. How would you like to make better use of the water that falls out of the sky? How do you get more plants? How, how do you get more production from every drop of water that falls on your farm? And right away, the lights go on, and uh, the benefits are that you get the biodiversity, and you also get erosion control. Dryland farmers have another tool for controlling erosion, no-till farming. Unlike the prairie, which is always covered, tilled bare soil does a poor job of collecting and storing water. No-till allows coal to leave its crop residues on the ground. As they decay, valuable nutrients and carbon are returned to the soil, and the soil is blanketed to retain moisture during extended dry seasons. While coal has reduced fallow to once every four years, some farmers like Steve Tucker are pushing diversity even further. I've got 10 different crops I'm growing. Look at this spot right here. You've got peas, you've got oats, you've got some foxtail, you've got various millets that are coming into it. Instead of using a wheat summer fallow rotation, he's growing a mixture of cover crops that include plants like sunflowers and flax. These build soil organic matter and provide his farm with greater resilience. Aside from crop diversity and keeping bare soil covered, some dryland farmers are looking to the prairie for yet another source of inspiration. Historically, the prairie's diversity was maintained by huge herds of bison. They ate the dominant grasses so that other plants had a chance to grow. But as settlers moved west in the 19th century, the bison were killed off. Today, a different animal has come to fill that role. By integrating livestock into their farming systems and using movable fencing to help cattle mimic the rotational grazing practices of the bison that preceded them, farmers like the Sales family are building healthy soil. At the same time, they grow a diverse mix of forages, from peas to oats to turnips, more plants than was ever thought possible in this arid climate. For these dryland farmers, adaptability to a changing, unpredictable climate requires resilience and developing perhaps their greatest skill, building healthy soil. Not just for one season or one year, but for generations to come.